Hey Lenny lovers, it's Lisa Young Sutton with a video I know you are going to love. It's an introduction to the method of distance for love and relationships, the ever popular theme. Yes. Okay. Now this is a reading for a couple, but I will also explain what the cards mean for a single person because um, many of you have asked me that already. All right. Now there is so much involved in the method of distance. So with each video, I'm only going to give you one chunk at a time because just giving you one chunk at a time will take probably over a half hour or something. I don't know. Um, we'll see how long this, this is. I'm going to try to make it snappy. Um, but, you know, you have to uh, remember that that's the way you learn. You need constant exposure to something in order for it to start to gel in your brain. You know, what do they say? It makes the more you go over something, it, it like digs little grooves out in your brain and then it becomes, uh, you know, e information that's easier to find and uh, all of that. Or it makes more sense. Okay. Now, if you look in my book, okay. <clears throat> Petite Leonard Mond Oracle, Lisa Young Sutton, that's me. You will see I have a chapter on the method of distance, near, far, okay? And in there, you will find the, um, the steps, but the distance rules, that's really the important thing that can get you started because it's not an all-inclusive book, but, um, or, you know, section, it's just a chapter in, in that book. Um, but the, uh, all of the distance rules are in there, plus a sample reading. So um, definitely look in the book. Okay, now for now I want you to know, or to start I should say, I want you to know that the Petit Lenormand deck has been used this way from the beginning. This was the original method for using this deck for divination. Yes, the deck was originally Das Spiel der Hoffnung, the Game of Hope. It was originally a game, um, but the cards themselves were, were based on the coffee cards. Um, okay, so then when they made it later into a card, a deck used for divination, the right from the start, the method was the method of distance, okay? Now, we, we can also say that the distance meanings are actually the earliest recorded divinatory meanings for any cards, okay? They came from coffee ground reading, okay? So the, the instructions that came or that were written for coffee ground reading were all based on near and far. It was all based on proximity. So then they d developed coffee cards and they were based on proximity. And then from the coffee cards, we got the Petit Lenormand also intended to be used for the method of distance. And then what do we have after that? Well, in America, we had the uh, Gypsy Witch deck also based on the method of distance. So we had the coffee cards, then Petit Lenormand, then the Gypsy Witch. Okay, all method of distance. All right, so, so yes, it would behoove you to learn, to learn this because then you have the key to mastering card divination. <laughs> all right, now today's video is a relationship question. Okay, it's for a relationship question. Now this is um, a spread for the relationship between Pebbles 29 and Bam Bam 28. And they've been married for many years. In fact, they've been together since birth pretty much, right? Uh, Pebbles is the seeker. Okay, that's always important to know who your, you have to know who your seeker is. All right, now she is unsure right now of their relation, of the future of their relationship which is why she came for a reading, right? Because um, Arnold, the paper boy, has moved back to bedrock and is turning her head. He's uh, still as slick as ever. Um, all right, now the time frame for this spread is the next three months. So remember, we're talking about relationship here. What are the steps? The first step is to check your players, okay? 28, 28 and 29, where are they in relation to each other? Here, let me move that, that's distracting me. Um, okay, here they are far apart as well as facing away from each other, but the important thing is that they are far apart. Remember, she is the seeker. Her very near cards are these. She only has three because she lands in a corner. Where are her near cards? The next layer out. These are her near cards. That makes this 
section her far cards. These are the cards that are just out of her reach and then all of these cards are very far. They all have their own meanings, okay, messages. All right, now, so the first thing you check is where they are. They are far apart, okay. Now, I check what connects them. This is not a traditional method of distance technique. It is mine, but I use it every time, always have, and it works perfectly. So whenever I um, put anything in these method of distance videos, I'm just going to call it mod, okay? Whatever I put in these mod videos that is not traditional, I will always tell you. So there will be no question. Now, why do I um, use the connection thing? The connection <laughs> thing? Because she, being the seeker, has a line of sight to read. She gets a row to read. That is her line of sight. Yes, that's traditional. The partner card, because he is significant to this, you know, to this reading, he get. I give him the column. He gets the column. We can say that's his line of sight, right? What cards connect them? Well, the main card that connects them is is the heart, because she gets the row. He gets the column. So this is the primary card, but this is the secondary card that connects them. Okay, so they they get two here. All right. So, what can we say about this? right from the start is that she's still connected to him through love. Yes, she still loves Bam Bam and she also has this. So there's still joy and happiness and all of the you know beautiful things in their relationship. But this is in her far section. So it's just out of reach, which tells you that her heart currently has cooled a bit. All right. Now, Let's talk about the relationship trio because in, in mod, we don't just look for one card to talk about relationships. I think typically people just use the heart. In mod, we have three cards, which is why it's such a perfect system for relationships because all the three cards have to be considered. They all have their own um, you know, message to bring to the story and working together, you get a complete and accurate depiction of what's going on. Okay, so what is the relationship trio? It is the ring, the anchor, and the heart. Boop, 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 and they all have their own little rules to follow. Now, they, they follow the regular meanings, so, you know, you need to know your meanings of these cards as they pertain to a relationship, right? Okay, but they all have something to say in this method as well. All right, now, the, what it, let's talk about the ring first. What is the ring a card of? It's the card of commitment. And it represents either an existing bond, such as a marriage, which it does in this spread, or a possible bond if you're a single person looking for a relationship, okay? You want it near and to the right. Of the three cards, this is the only one that has a stipulation about whether it should be on the right or the left. The other two, we're only um, concerned with proximity. But this one, you're concerned with proximity and whether it's on the right or the left. Why do you want it on the right? Because in mod, we read left to right, okay? Doesn't matter that she's the seeker and she's facing left. In mod, we read left to right. If you still want to do mod and, and read uh, right to left, because that's the way you're used to reading when you see this, that's fine. You just have to shift everything. And I'm not even going to mention that because I'm going to just blow all of your minds. So let's <laughs> leave that alone. Just know that you want this to the right. Why? Because we read left to right and you want to see this either happening or continuing as the seeker moves forward. And remember, this is a three month spread. Okay. So for the next three months, is she still going to be married? Yes, she is. Okay. So let's go to the heart. The heart is what in a relationship? It's the card of passion, of love and pleasure. Okay. Now you can have this with or without security and safety for sure. Okay. That's why you need to always be looking at all three cards. I'm going to keep repeating that. All right. So now this is just out of her reach, um, as well as being blocked from her by the mountain. Um, but um, the fact that it is just out of reach for her says that she's currently um, feeling, um, you know, this has cooled down a bit. So she's feeling unfulfilled or a bit lonely within the relationship. All right. So, um, but the fact that it's in her line of sight makes it significant too. So I'm going to keep going back to that. All right. 
and it is the card that connects her to Bam Bam, and we're talking about a relationship here. So yes, she still loves him. All right, so let's go to the anchor. The anchor is the card of fidelity when we're talking about an existing relationship, okay? Because what does fidelity mean? It's faithfulness within a relationship. So it's also the card of security, safety, and stability, right? I mean, that's why it's the, um, it's the card of reaching a goal because isn't that anybody's goal, no matter what you're talking about, no matter what your theme is, your goal is to get to that secure place, the safe and stable place. So that's why it's the card of reaching a goal. Okay, now here it's very far, all right? Now when the anchor is very far or far for a couple, it indicates a lack of trust or lack of safety, or maybe the seeker isn't, uh, isn't taking the relationship seriously during the time period, or is dabbling in impure thoughts. Okay, and that's what Pebbly Poo is currently doing. All right, now you, you don't just look at proximity for these cards, you also read the cards around them, just as you read for your, your uh, significator cards. For your theme cards, you also read the cards around them. So let's just look at the cards around the anchor. Um, well, let's see. Here we have the card of taking a chance on one side and confusion on the other side, right? Um, below we have, um, this is saying this is the, the tree. That, so the health, the health of this requires some attention. And we know this is an unhealthy state because it's above the fox and it's got the snake over here. So yes, this this is currently in, in, in an unhealthy state and it requires her attention. And what is it regarding a possible in, uh, uh, deceit regarding Bam Bam, okay? Or convoluted thoughts regarding Bam Bam, I'm gonna put it that way, okay? I don't even wanna mention the word, um, you know, like cheating or anything because that's not showing up here, all right? Okay, now, let's talk about what this trio what this trio would mean if she were single okay let me get that out of the way right now all right so the first thing to remember uh, is your time frame so you know whenever like if you're single looking for love and the cards are not uh, placed just right don't try to flower up the cards or change them so that they look better just know that this is only a three month spread so yeah you're not going to fall in love with the, in the next three months it doesn't mean that the guy you're currently dating um, isn't the one or anything like that um, it just means you, you know you, you don't have all three in place in the in the time frame okay all right so just think closer equals stronger closer equals more significant all right so if you are dating say and looking for a commitment and the ring is far and to the left it's just not it's it's too far away it's not definitely not going to happen in the time frame right um, if it's close and if it's near and to the left, it's still not going to ha happen in the time frame, but it's closer, right? Now, think about if the heart and anchor were near, but the ring was, was to the left for a single, that would indicate that there's, there's hope and there's passion, right? So something's happening, but you're just not going to fully commit during the time frame. That's all that means, right? Um, because this is on the wrong side. I mean, if it were, okay, we're pretending here. All right, so now... Um, let's see, the heart, um, the heart near, if the heart were near for a single, it just says your, your, your heart is beating for someone, right? You're passionate about uh, someone, you have romantic feelings, but there, if the other cards aren't there, there's no relationship yet, all right? Um, if the anchor were near for a single, it, it can show that you want to offer your loyalty to someone, or they want to offer it to you. But without this in the right place, you know, a relationship won't, won't uh, form yet, okay? Commitment won't form yet, okay? Now this is the card of hope, right? The anchor is the card of hope. So if that were the only card near, or if just that and the heart were near without this, it could just say that you're, you're just hoping still. You're still in that hopeful stage. You're, you're, it's wishful thinking, you could put it that way. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, just remember, you know, what's, what's near is within your reach, what's far is, is out of your reach within the time period, okay? And then remember all the meanings of your cards and it'll all make perfect sense. All right, so other than the relationship trio, 
right? Other than these three cards, when you're talking about a relationship, what else do you look at? Well, you still need to read around the, the players, okay? The, the two people that are involved. You still need to read around their cards, okay? Um, and you still, you'll, you'll, um, you'll read his, his column, you'll read her line of sight, her row. Um, and then what else do you do? You, you do what you do in any GT, okay? You're still gonna look at your corners, you're still gonna read your fate line, and you're going to read your uh, look at your center four. That's a traditional method. That's very important. This is like the you know the heart of the matter, just like that middle card of the box spread. This is the heart of the matter right here. Now the first three cards that so many people start with with GT reading, that's not a, a traditional method. It came along later, but it's fine. You can still do that because it does start the story. Okay, so. What could we say here? Well, we have, um, we have a dangerous opportunity suddenly appears that's threatening stability. And that is what this is all about. So you can see that that still works. All right, okay, now the fate line, let's look at the fate line. The fate line starts with unknown information that's about to be revealed. We know that because it's one of her near cards, okay? Um, so unknown information is about to be revealed. That's going to lead to change regarding what's eroding the sanctity of her home. Let's put it that way. Okay, now let's look at the center four. And who falls in the center four but Bam Bam. That makes him really important, okay, because he's in the center four, but also because the, the uh, uh, bleh, key, oh, geez, I couldn't find the word. The key falls here too. Okay, makes it doubly important, all right? And we also have the ship and the child. So we know that something something new, right? That this is significant, it regards him. Something new is just starting. Okay, regarding what? Regarding longing for, whoops, longing for adventure, um, exploring, ooh, she is exploring things right now, right? And, and also remember that Arnold just returned from being distant, right? So this all, is, is telling you what's at the heart of the matter of this, that this is the most important thing in this GT, no matter what other life areas you're reading for, you know that this is the most significant thing happening. Okay, now, what do the corners say? The corners say a sudden dangerous threat regarding communication, remember Arnold just communicated with her, is coming to pebbles, bringing hardship, okay? Now, Let's look at Bam Bam's column. Okay, what can we say about Bam Bam's column? Remember, he's the secondary here. We can say that he's in the dark. He's got the clouds above him, right? So he's in the dark uh, regarding something that's really important. Okay, regarding change to his, his love life. Okay, as the secondary, that's just how I would read that. Okay, now she's the, the primary, so this is her line of sight. The way I would read this as um, as they relate to her being the seeker tells me let's see um, well they indicate that she is um, she isn't dealing with her current burdens or she's shirking her responsibilities because the cross is the farthest card from her right um, and it's in regard to her reputation this is her reputation social success card okay um, and when it's next to the cross like this, we can also um, say that um, this says that she needs to make some sacrifices in order to protect this, right? Or she could be dealing with some guilt and remorse. Uh-huh. That's uh, impacting um, her reputation. Okay. Now, remember, when you're reading a line of sight, you're also reading the cards that touch these cards. So, so that's the cards above and below. Okay. Now here, these two cards, we don't have any nor do we here, but these um, four all have cards above and below. But here we have above cards, correct? Okay, so what's above the cross? What, what are all these burdens regarding her loyalties? Okay, um, what's impacting her, her uh, reputation? Ooh, drama, discord, conflict. Okay, the next card is the sun. And let me just point out the luminaries really quickly because she's got two of them. She's got two of the three in her line of sight, all right? The luminary cluster is a traditional method of distance technique um, that you look at. I call them the celestial cards. Um, 
uh, doesn't matter what you call them, you know that there are three of them, the stars, the sun, and the moon, okay? Where do you typically want to see them? Their most perfect position is near and above your seeker, so they are shining down on, on them, okay? But here, we have two in her line of sight, yet they are both out of her reach, so that is significant, okay? So, um, what, what we can say is that maybe she, since they're in her line of sight, bringing attention to themselves and they're, they're out of her reach, um, maybe she needs to ask herself, where, where is she putting her energy, right? Um, what does she need clarity on? Um, what's, what's going on with her social success? Why is it out of her reach? You know, she needs to look at some things there. Um, and the stars being out of her reach, what does that say to me? Well, the fact that it's still above means it's shining down on her, but it's, it's way too far. She can't even see it. So while it's still shining down on her, um, she's currently, you know, during the time frame, right, she's currently um, not able to see the correct p uh, path forward. Okay. So now let's go back to her line of sight. Okay. So let's look at the sun now. The sun has the coffin weighing on it bringing like illness and crisis to, to, uh, to the sun, right? Regarding what? Regarding her personal life, regarding the sanctity of her home, okay? So let's see. Let's uh, look at the, the birds now. Okay, now the birds now is, is significant here because what's between her and, and her success, her big success card is... The stress and distraction of the birds regarding what regarding this new issue okay that has just started that is eroding what the sanctity of her home okay okay so um, let's see her heart is next Oops. her heart is next and it is standing on change right change of heart right the key, though, is weighing down on it. Remember, the cards above carry more weight than the cards below, okay? So the key is weighing down on it. So the, there, there is a solution, okay, to this, but it's currently out of her reach. Why? Because it's in the far section, so it's just out of her reach, okay? So what cards are within her reach? Well, this is the, the longevity card. We're talking about relationships now again, right? What's right above it? This is the marriage card, okay? So the long, long-standing um, marriage between her and Bam Bam is facing an enemy, okay? It's because that is what's standing between it and her heart, okay? So there's a big obstacle here. Um, and look at the cards touching it, okay? We got... The self-interest card, the wrongness card, um, sneakiness card, right above it, weighing on it, okay? And then we have secrets below it, okay? This is all pertaining to her. This is her line of sight, okay? Now, let's talk about, let's talk about these far cards, the cards that are just out of her reach, okay? Because we know that the very near cards have the greatest impact followed by the near cards, okay? These are all the cards that are within her reach, right? Now, of course, the near cards, to get to her, have to go through these cards, <laughs> okay? So they have to be read with these, but these cards are directly touching her, okay? So those are all the cards that are within her reach. The far section is interesting because it shows what, what you're just missing out on, like what, what you're just missing, all right? So you might be just missing out on something great or you might be just narrowly escaping something horrible here. So that's why these far cards are also important to look at, whereas the rest of this spread, they're all very far, but they have their own messages depending on what falls here, right? Okay, so let's see. Um, now, okay, speaking of the very far cards, let me just mention that you would rather have negative cards here than positive cards, but there are two exceptions, the mice and the cross. The mice I already talked about in the missing object video, 
but let's talk about the cross. Why do you want this far? Okay, that confuses a lot of people. Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> because this, re this regards your, your um, pain, your struggles, your burdens. Everybody has something. I don't care how perfect your life is. Everybody has some kind of struggle somewhere, something they don't like, right? Um, so it's got to fall somewhere. You can't remove it from the deck. Um, so why do you want it close? Well, you, you never want it directly above uh, your seeker's head. That's definitely where you don't want it, but you do want it near. Why? Because it, it shows that you're dealing with your pain. You're dealing with your burdens. You're facing your responsibilities, that kind of thing. And that is why in this uh, method, when it's near, it says your burdens will be of short duration. Why? Because you're dealing with them. You're facing, you're facing them. You're sorting them out. Okay, that is why you want that near. Now, speaking of these very far cards, let's talk about the ways because that is significant to this, um, what we're talking about here, right? Because she, she definitely needs to make a, 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 an important decision regarding her marriage, right? What does it mean when it's far? What does this card mean when it's far? What does this card mean? It's the card of, of uh, making a decision, right? Making a choice. It's the card of options and alternatives that are available to you. When it's far, they're not exactly available, are they? When it's far, you're not going to be making a decision within the time period because it's far, all right? It's out of your reach, okay? All right. Um, and then, of course, you read the cards around it to explain what it's talking about. Um, okay, so actually, while I'm looking in this corner, I see that the letter is far. What does the letter in the far position mean? It means that no significant information will be delivered to her during this period, which is why she can't make a decision, <laughs> okay? And this is also out of reach, too, so showing that she's not going to make a des decision because she's not going to get the important information she needs to... Uh, uh, have the key to you know to find the solution you see how it all works together yee okay now another notable card is the book um, which falls near to her indicating that there's significant some 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 insignificant secret right is going to be revealed during the period okay so when it's near it makes it makes this secret more significant and it also means it will be revealed to her during the time frame all right so what's going to be revealed to her um you know when i look at the cards that are above it and around it i would say that she is going to start seeing that arnold is actually the fox in the hen house okay let's talk about arnold a minute because what does she have right above her head she's got the visitor card that's what's on her mind okay so this is arnold this represents arnold here and, and what, what's above it is he's bringing uh, attractive offers, invitations, right? But what's facing it is the deceitful snake, so it is not to be trusted, okay? What, what is he trying to do? What is this facing the rider, the ring? So he's trying to hook up with her, but we have the um, distrust card on the other side, okay? So absolutely, he is not to be trusted, okay? Now... At the same time, you are reading this spread for a relationship that was her primary question, right? And, and just by the center four and the corners and all of this, you can see that it's probably the most significant thing going on in her life right now. You can still read for all your other life areas with the same spread. So just for example, because this is near, let's, let's look at her health. This is one of her near cards. When the tree card is near, it tells you there, there's some concern regarding your health, all right? Now, I like to look at this diagonal here because this is what's connecting this card to her is the ring, and then we have the clouds, right? So this is, you know, her marriage to him. It's also something that's a recurring, a recurring issue. It's something that she's, you know, connected to, right? But, but we have the clouds above it. So this, this tells me this is like in her head, right? This is my uh, mood card. It's your head is in a funk card. Um, so that tells me this is more of a mental health issue, 
all right? Mental health connected to her, okay? Um, now we read around, we read all the cards around the tree, okay? Because we're reading for health now. So we wanna see what cards are nearest to the tree, all right? So we have the anchor and the fox. Um, the anchor above the tree tells me that in reality, she's actually safe and secure, um, even though there's something, you know, wrong and sneaky regarding, you know, her thoughts right now, which is creating some health issues, okay? Um, now, regarding what? Well, here we got Bam Bam, and we got convoluted thoughts, right? Possible deceit, okay? Now, <laughs> it's, it's interesting that we got the, um, the key, may be far from her, but it's, it's touching the tree. So it's near to the tree. So we know that there's a solution for this health issue. And what is it? Follow that up. <laughs> it's the clover. I'm laughing because, you know, look in my book and, and look up clover and you'll find the health um, meanings for the, the clover card. It is the card of, um, you know, lightening up. Um, uh, it's a, it's a, a pick up in mood. Um, it's also my card for greens and vegetables and all that. Um, but it's, it's my uh, card for holistic alternatives um, as well as herb. I'm laughing because it's, it's herbal. It's the herbal uh, me medicine card too. So um, oh, let's go back to the last uh, uh, video I just made. You know, maybe she needs to find that missing bag of weed. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, so that's if you want to read around um, the, the tree card also, you know, if she wants to know about health, okay? Now say she also wants to know what's going on in her, her work, in her career, right? Well, this is my work card, the, the moon, okay? So what we could say, if she also wants to know what's going on at work, what we can immediately say that it is in her line of sight, but it's very far. So that means it's not going to greatly or directly impact her during the time period because it is so out of reach, all right? Um, but you still read around the, the, the cards around it, okay? Now it is missing two cards, and that's information in itself because the cards that land in the corners have missing, missing cards, right, for their boxes, and that just means that there are unknowns. There are things that aren't set in stone yet, maybe. Okay, so what can we say about her, her current work situation? We can say that she's experiencing some conflict at work, right? And what does it regard? A, con, a, a colleague, okay? This, when it, I'm talking about work, is a colleague, a friend at work, right? Um, that's making her feel boxed in maybe, low, uh, ill, right, restricted. Um, but what this is really telling me that is that it looks like conflict conflict is going to um, end a relationship at, with a colleague. Yeah. Um, okay, so here the cards flanking the, um, the work card are sun and cross, okay? So this is... Um, saying that uh, she, she needs to see, see these, you know, she's, she's enduring hardship regarding this, but she needs to see it more clearly. Um, she needs to maybe put some energy here. Um, she needs to know that the sun is gonna come out, you know, that kind of thing. But it's, it's asking, this is asking for warmth rather than coldness regarding this. Um, and I would say in reality that this um, ending, this ending, this conflict that's gonna cause an end to this relationship is actually, because the sun is shining on her house, it's actually the best thing for her. It's gonna bring success into her, her personal life, right? Um, yeah, it is, okay? And, and it also, because this is countering this, right? Um, we can say that she needs to, she needs to focus uh, her, her loyalties at home rather than caring, rather than letting the, the burden of, of this conflict with the ending of this relationship at work, she needs to focus on putting her loyalties at home, okay? And that hope, that'll help her work situation. Okay, um, yeah, and the stars is above saying that that is the, the right way to, to view that, okay. Now, lastly, let me quickly just show you her social life. Uh, the social card is number 20. 
um, and it is very, very far. It can't get much further from her, right? So that's probably the, the least important thing in her uh, life during the time period, um, right? Um, this, the whole thing is telling us that she needs to focus more on her personal relationship rather than her social life. Okay, let's put it that way. Um, but we still read around this. Uh, we don't have a complete box, but we have these cards. And what do these tell me? These tell me that she's primarily uh, communicating with all of her friends via the internet these days. Um, this was her decision. Um, she's out of the flow of socializing due to, you know, um, disease, current disease, right? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because, yeah, conflict, um, re recurring illnesses, um, and her strength lies in um, making the, the decision to communicate via the internet. I'm just seeing that as the internet now regarding her social life. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Um, all right, so there you have it. I hope I kept that short enough for everyone. Um, that was the introduction to uh, reading the method of distance for relationships, and there will be a lot more method of distance videos coming. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day. Bye.